So 804, we'll call the meeting to order. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The new Waitley School Committee 8 a.m. meeting. Yay. Great yeah. item. Hand the meeting over to Darius, our new interim superintendent. Right. Well, thank you. And I um, obviously want to first thank everybody for giving this a.m. meeting a, a try. Um, make sure that you redo, we will talk about the schedule a little bit later on the, in the um, itinerary here, um, agenda. Um, but um, we do fall on different dates and it does move around in trying to consolidate number of meetings, um, meeting days um, a month for the central office and myself. So um, I do want to, for the first time, I guess, publicly introduce Chrissy mm -hmm. Curtin at a school committee meeting. And, uh, welcome. 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 Thank you. It's awesome to She's be here. Off and running and doing a great start. Um, great start to the school year, and uh, we're just very happy to have her. So, mm -hmm. great to have her. so first thing on the business is to reorganize. Um, <clears throat> I will re first open request for nominations of chair. I nominate Katie Edwards for chair. I second. All in favor. <laughs> so you, you, they need to close. Sorry, okay. but just I know what's, what's no, going on. Procedures. We're, we're not very good. You need to procedures. close nominations to. Move the close nominations. Someone has to move the close of nominations. No, no one else. You should second it. Second. Um, closing nominations. All those for closing nominations. Okay, three zero, and then um, uh, all in favor of Katie being new chair for next year or old chair for next year. Three <laughs> zero. Okay, and so now that we have a chair, I now hand the meeting oh. back to you. <laughs> okay. Isn't that fun? Other. So now we need to reorganize the rest of the list. Yeah. Can we just, keep I, it the same? Yeah, I think you have to go through it, but just go, go through, through like, one. yeah, we want some vice chair, secretary, chair, uh, okay. appoint so somebody to Frontier. Entertain nominations to vice chair. I and nominate I Maureen mm -hmm. the vice chair. Second how, about, how, about, how about we'll make her Both. vice chair and secretary? <laughs> Both? Both, what why about not? you? That's Are you doing negotiations? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we That's do both trade. at the same time? Yeah, she, I, 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 don't, I don't see if why. If Mary's not here taking minutes, we need somebody possibly to take minutes. And she probably has better handwriting than I do. All right. Okay, so we have a nomination on the table for Maureen to be vice chair. Anyone second? Second. Second. Well, I second. You second. I second. Maureen, you okay with that? Yeah. All in favor? Oh, I didn't close the nomination. No, you know, I don't think you, you only have to do that chair. Okay. <clears throat> make not, I'm no, you're saying make I'm, I'm wrong, someone will correct me. Send me an we'll, email. We'll move on to secretary. <laughs> make a motion to have Maureen be secretary for the upcoming year. Oh, I second. If that's okay with you, I don't It only means that she has to do, she's never, you've never had to do the minutes before, have you? Just in case. Just in case, okay. All in favor? Uh, I nominate Bob to be the Frontier representative. Oh, oh a second, sorry. Are you okay with that, Bob? Yep. All in favor? Still on it. First copy. Okay, and then um, we're all reps, so we don't need to, do we need to vote that? So the, no, so the following you can appoint as chair. I get to appoint. Yeah, okay. you don't have to nominate. You can just appoint the um, different, <laughs> different <laughs> subcommittees to represent. Yeah, I'll still do it. I already have <clears throat> it on my calendar. Oh, okay. Excellent. Um, I'm happy to stay with capital planning unless someone else wants. Does anyone want anything before I appoint I, everybody? I would take policy review if Bob didn't want it. Nope, that's good. Okay. And I'll be the 38 rep for negotiations. Okay, so we have Maureen as the collaborative rep, myself as the capital planning, Maureen as the policy review. Why don't you just, why don't you do the sick bank? If Bob, any... I'll do the sick bank. Yeah. Do you Unless need, you need two? Do we need two of them for that? You can put me if you want. Yeah. For the what, sick bank? Sick bank. Yeah. yeah. We do need two. Um, I why believe. Why don't Maureen and I do it? Because yeah. we probably have to. Yeah. I believe it's a subcommittee and you can't have a subcommittee of one. Oh, okay. So I think it's the two of so you we'll and then two members and myself of the staff. myself on the sick bank, and then Bob will be our <coughs> negotiations. Yep. Great. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Then um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes on June 4th. Second. Second. All 
second favor. Okay, right <clears throat> God, we were hoping for public comment. Huh? Okay. Are now any public comment? Mary, you're not here as public, I guess. Okay, um, I will hand it back over to you. Okay. So our, um, I'd like to introduce Brian Richards, who is the um, TMS, our TMS representative for um, business manager for pretty much will be covering Waitley really? um, for the yep. school year. Um, hello, and, uh, welcome. hello everybody, welcome. Um, I believe you all had the financials for 630. Mm -hmm. at, you know, the general fund was at zero balance at the end of the year, plus the um, school choice and the other ones were in the back of that. Um, the warrants, I think Bob already signed it, but the warrants are there, so mm -hmm. we can sign those before you disappeared today so we can get those signed. Um, warrants totaled uh, a little over $52,402 uh, on this warrant, which was $30,479 from the general fund and after school program of 482, uh, a grant, REAP grant, 1634 and um, Article 13, I guess it was hand and fire protection. It was like 19,800. That, that was the other big one. So. Where did that come out of? The big one? Yeah. Is that yeah. general fund? Or do I it's, have it's it? It's on there. It's what the. Uh, 19,000. I think it's the, yeah. That was for the sprinklers. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So the town's paying for that yeah. one? Yeah. Okay. We have a fund for that, don't we? Yeah. We have some money. I you know how much it was? There's money set aside. I think it was like. I like have it as part of the report. Oh, you have okay. Yep. Yeah. And that is, I don't have anything else. Can I usually, if there's just any questions or variances okay. that there's just, uh, early in the year. So, so, I, so in my hand, we have uh, year of end. Yep. Does that mean we had like $4,300 left over at the end? And is that what it says on the final page? or Well, on the uh, there's different funds. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Funds. The general fund was zero, which was on page five. And then there's, you know, the school choice circuit breaker. And I think that last page was uh, schedule three. I have a question about, so the... This is the end of the journal. Oh, I see. I should have looked on top. Yeah, on the top. It's Number five? Here it is. This one? Yep. Two. Okay. But the, can you explain the encumbrances, what those represent? Because at the end of the year, shouldn't they, most of them be gone? It should. Most of them should be gone, but normally, I, I believe what happens is if there's funds available mm -hmm. that um, you can probably put, I uh, believe, put those orders in for at the ahead of time so that uh, you can use that funds for next year um, you can you can do that so you don't have to use the pre next year's budget so Sorry. usually they'll roll it into <coughs> school carry choice you'll spend less school choice money and you, you put that money back in school choice because you're allowed to carry over school choice money mm -hmm. um, you, that's if you're really if you're talking about low amounts you know okay. like ten thousand that kind of thing um, yeah it wasn't that big yeah Okay. And then how about revenues on the um, preschool? Is it, I don't know if you have those figures, I but don't I'd have be interested in seeing that, uh, as compared to what the expenses were. Like next meeting or something? Yeah, maybe for next meeting we could bring what the for, for the preschool. 630 or for the For 630 yeah. against 630, just to see if we're covering. Um, because it looked like the expenses did pretty well compared to budget, which is good. Yep. And then some of the circuit breaker we're going to get this year, right? Isn't that isn't this money that's coming in? Um, it looks like it's over the circuit breaker account, but that's money that will come in this year's budget and will be received. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is circuit breaker money the money that we get on uh, children? 
Is it special? Yeah, it, is it special if it's over special 25, ed if it it's goes, over twenty five thousand dollars or something like that? Or is that? I don't know the exact number. It's over. If it's around twenty. I think it's a little higher than that. Okay. Um, but that money over that amount will the state will give you reimbursement, but they give it to you the following year. So that's what you're. That's right. So what that, is that, the yeah. circuit breaker money coming in this year? Um, off of last year's. Um, Right, so I'm assuming that's what this number is here, the circuit breaker number. Yeah. And then there was tuition, I remember, from the end of last year that was supposed to come back to us. Tuition to other schools was 27000 that we had to pay out. So you'll see it's unbudgeted, so I think, I believe that was money, if remember at the end of last year's budget that Patty was explaining was going to be coming back to us. I do remember. Do so you remember that? So it's just something to keep an eye on. I mean, um, on page six, yeah. the uh, tuition to other mass schools. Yeah. There's twenty seven thousand oh, right. okay. that we yeah. paid out, yeah. but I think we get that back eventually from yeah. other schools. So I'm just curious to keep track of that. So we make is sure. Is that on? Is that a, is that above and beyond the five thousand dollars? If it's school choice, in other words, if it's a, these were yes, I think these were students that we had extra. I had needs yep. that needed to go yep. to outside the district. Okay. That's my understanding. All right. All right. So, I'll look into find out. I'll take it. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. Um, thank you, Brian. Thank you. All right. Where are we? Unfinished S business. Sprinkler. Sprinkler system. All right, so I have a report, uh, well, an email from Bob about asking me where we're at. Um, the flushing went out, went well. Uh, as you remember, the different parts of the system was that they were going to have to flush the system out um, and repair the leaks within the system, and then there's the dropping through the ceilings of the, of the system. So Chris, he's learned, and I've learned quite a bit about sprinkler systems this summer. Um, so they... <clears throat> So they flushed out the system this summer successfully. Um, there were a lot of leaks that that happened when they flushed the system out. And for just, I don't know how much was talked about this prior, but um, when you have a sprinkler system, the sprinkler lines are not actually filled with water, they're filled with air. And so um, when the sprinkler head gets turned on, water comes rushing into the system. So it's not holding water all the time. So that's why when you flush a system, that's when you'll find the leaks. Mm -hmm. um, so they went through that and they repaired that. Um, uh, let me re kind of read what he said. The flushing as described in the original bid is now complete. The bid request indicated an amount of sprinkler pipe to replace. However, in my opinion, did not clearly identify what sections to repair and represented an allowance to deal with leaks that occurred during the flushes. Um, the numerous leaks were repaired and replaced sections of pipe during the flushing, so it appears that all portions of the work is complete. Um, what remains to be done is the measuring and replacement of the dry head pennants pendants and heads. So those mm -hmm. are things that come down. The problem with that we have with that that makes it more complicated is they're all different lengths. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of, when they went through, they kind of hand, I guess it would be hand plumbing, or hand, <laughs> instead of like hand carpentry, hand yeah. plumbing. But there are different lengths in different rooms depending on the ceiling heights. So um, so it's a little bit more than just ordering all these different heights and just, just throwing them in. Um, so um, Hampshire Fire is working on quoting a fixed price for the last portion of work. They've also been asked to provide a quote to fill the system with nitrogen, as suggested, that would be off. That um, that suggested to reduce the amount of corrosion in the pipes. So apparently, if you put nitrogen in the pipes, um, you know, the without oxygen, obviously the corrosion will come down. So that would just sit in there. That just sits in there, and so the right, and so when it gets activated, the air gets pumped out. Whatever the, the whatever the air is. Um, Didn't we do that already? Didn't we pay for that already? Back let. Yeah, we. I remember we had a. They talked about it. I remember they, they mentioned that that was what they want, where they wanted to go. I'm not sure we actually did it. Because I know it cost. God, I have like twenty five hundred dollars in my mind about the the process of the nitrogen if they put it in to hold this over until we had the repairs, or was this something we talked about? Um, well, I think they couldn't do it until they figured out the leaks. Right. Well, they certainly are going to okay. put it in until so, they flush it out. But I didn't know if, because of the winter time, if they were going to 
do it to help with the freezing if there was any freezing that, or, there was a different thing for the pipes was it? for the plumbing okay when the, it was so cold last year they did something okay where they put something in the water antifreeze yeah some type of freezing i think mentions okay that's like that's okay. different that's different that's than different the nitrogen okay than the sprinklers okay right. is my understanding okay and i'll be honest i have no idea maybe yeah. that maybe that's like it was maybe it's actually like having to read about it last night somewhere okay. <laughs> so that's um, my I know. That's yeah. somewhere so the total, just talking about, you're talking about money here is the last part as we saved the best for last. Um, so the total flushing, the repair of the pipes, it was $20,006.85. Um, the town has set a five seventy-four thousand um, to deal with the sprinkler system. Um, I believe we have estimate proposals that the dry pennant heads will cost in a range between thirty-five dollars to $40,000. Um, and it, so it looks like we'll be okay in the projected amount of budget. Um, in fact, we would hopefully will come in under. Yeah. So it sounds like it's a lot less than... So they were saying 125 that. last year. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. And the town's being very generous in mm -hmm. covering the costs. Yeah. We put aside money for the capital planning. Yeah. Can we know when that next part will happen? Um, Probably during break. Um, I do not know. I think he's waiting until he gets the quotes. It was one of those things that we said it could go on to some level during the school day. Meaning, you know, we'd have to work with yes. you, but you could do the library one day, do one classroom at a time. It was cause some disruption, but you could kind of pick away at that that kind of thing. Um, depends on how they do it. If they're able to go through, measure all of it, and then do it over a, a vacation, you know, obviously we'll try to do it as least disruption as possible, Miss Curtin. But we'll see where it ends up. <laughs> Please don't cut into my instruction. Yeah, time. we will not cut into instruction time. As long as the kids aren't climbing up the ladders. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Did they <laughs> see that? She's already had to deal with water on her desk. It rained in my office. This was going to resolve the issue. Like, yes, that's. Right. Um, it seems well, like every time they do something, they find something. They're rough the, somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. No, I think the. Um, I think they were pleased on the, on the how the flushing system, what happened with the flushing okay. system, and you know, looking at it afterwards. During that. And yes. As for those who, good time. Yes, there was. <laughs> so yes, there was the. There's no way of knowing where the leaks are going to come, and so either you remove every single ceiling yeah. tile worth, every pipeline which is through the whole building, um, and uh, or you let it See ride. Or you let it ride. <laughs> and um, we summer. found a puddle on the principal's desk, so we let it ride. And uh, <laughs> um, so one of the questions I had was, is it functional right now? If we were right. to have a fire right at this moment, are those yes. sprinklers mm -hmm. going to do something? Yeah. Well, you and then some might not. That's the issue, right? Right. But the, if the, it was deemed the building is safe because every room has an outside door. Right. And so but remember, like sprinklers are not sprinklers are more for um, the, the are for property protection, not people. people protection. And fire, as I was told by Fire Chief John, let me know. Um, mm -hmm. It's also to protect his guys. He doesn't have to go into a burning mm -hmm. building. So you I mean you're the, the kid? The kids, in fact, if there was ever a fire, would be exiting. You know, as the things were coming on, not you know that kind of thing. So um, it's more for it to protect the property and obviously not put the firefighters in um, and unneeded danger. So well, we don't need to test that. We don't need to do that. No, no, no we're good on okay. that. Okay, I trust. That and usually the sprinklers cause more damage than sometimes the fire, but that's the way it works. Um, okay, so that should be done. We're not quite sure yet. We gotta wait for the pits. I guess we gotta wait for the for the quotes and the, and the timing. So that's Brian quotes. that's doing that, or is that? Um, Bob, Bob took it. this summer. Um, it went back to Brian, Bob, and I met, and um, Bob took it back on as kind of the lead. Okay. Um, you see, seeing the email, I, those, they read you part of an email that was basically shared with um, the town administrator and um, Brian and well, Brian and John. So they were okay. kind of all kept in the loop of what's going on there. Okay. All right. The step, like. Any questions on that? Right, good. Do you want me to just keep going? Yep. How do you like to work? Oh, uh, yeah, I let you, let you just, like just let me keep going. going. All right. Okay. Um, the next, so that was unfinished business. Under <laughs> new business now, um, we are looking at the revised uh, meeting schedule. So um, this meeting schedule was not voted upon. We changed the date of this meeting this summer, and I sent out a proposed um, schedule to all the the chairs to share with the school committees, um, and then you know uh, it'd be appropriate for us to, to vote, take vote, to vote, to vote, take a look at it, and then vote the meeting schedule. Does anybody? Have um, the thing they're kind of really. It's in the packet, but I have extra copies. We have extra copies if you don't have one. 
Yeah, it was in the past. I, I already went through it. I well, have you no, no, yes, no, no, so good. So the, we'll do early in the fall with the joint meeting still in October. That's correct. So our next meeting is the joint meeting on the 4th. Um, and then basically what, what, <clears throat> what you're seeing is that budget months, January, February, and March, mm -hmm. we will have the regular evening meetings as of last year's, as the, the traditional schedule. Okay. Um, when I threw it together, I didn't know putting a time limit on a budget meeting it's not always the best idea. Mm -hmm. Some of those things have to be processed. And this doesn't prevent us from having additional meetings. And um, I mean, already Frontier's looking at having an additional meeting, so the whole idea is already, uh, um, <laughs> you know, it is, the idea is to reduce the overall amount of nights um, mm -hmm. that I have out. But that's including, it's also negotiation year, so there's gonna be a lot of negotiating meetings. Um, it's, um, you know, and all the other subcommittee meetings that go from that. So, um, you know, I appreciate that, you know, we took the, took the I, plunge to go morning. Um, I, I, I like the eight o'clock meetings. You know, it's, it's on Tuesday, so it's my day off from work until January. But I appreciate that we can do them on Tuesday mornings, and mm -hmm. if it works out, we'll, you know, with you two and stuff like that. You know, I mean, yeah, we're all willing to I mean, that. most Better of our meetings me should too. be fairly. Or most of our meetings are Pretty fairly sure short and, and stuff. So. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, it is one of those things we can change. We, Just because yeah. you vote the schedule doesn't mean it, it, it says, you know what, we have this issue, we need to get together, you just yeah. schedule a meeting, that's the way it works. This way we can just kind of say it's been voted upon, we can get, it already is posted. posted. It's one of those things, that, but I don't. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, new 2018-2019 school committee meetings. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> All right, the next, second thing here is under new business is that we'll get an update on the summer building maintenance, um, summer programs, and personnel updates. So, uh, Ms. Kurt and I will be doing that kind of together. So, why don't we start? I have a list of the, uh, the things that happened last year. Awesome. All right, I'll let you go through it. Well, thanks. Okay. You can read it too. I could, but that was take away. I think you need some limelight here. Well, I don't know if I get any limelight on on a lot of these projects. These happened uh, many of them before I before I came on board. And I'll double check my notes to see if you get them all. Um, well, you want, you want to go over the maintenance the last page? The last page? Is that what you want? Okay. Yeah, please. Uh, this list was prepared by. Uh, uh, Mary. Mary and uh, my custodian. So, uh, completed removal and installation of playground shed that happened last year. Um, completed sandbox repairs. We have a new bottle filling station in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. been much needed for years. It filters the water. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, in pre-K, built and installed new doors under sink and new shelf in bottom of cupboard. Uh, installed new sink and faucets in pre-K. Cleaned vents in entranceway, kitchen and classrooms. Cleaned exterior lights at main entrance, um, which took some doing because they're they're fairly high up. Mm. Um, Question? Yes. Did, did we get a chance to paint the poles? Because Bob was asking me about the poles and stuff, and I know you really wanted them painted, so I, maybe was, we get some volunteers to do it some some Sunday if we, if they still need to be painted. I, I think um, Bob may have mistook my inquiry for okay. thinking that it was something I needed to have done like instantly, and, and I talked to him about that, that it, it's, it's another thing that we noticed mm -hmm. and put it on the list, yeah. but it's certainly, there's, it's not an emergency. We've discussed that in the past. It should stay on but the they list. Still, but they look like they need to be painted. Yeah. In my, in they my do. And you could say in your professional opinion yes. about that. Yes. 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 <laughs> you can get a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> somebody wants to hold the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob was it. talking about you know bringing in a company. And it, it sounded like it was getting a little complex and a little expensive, so I said, let's just uh, yeah. press pause on that. Bob, you'll need something to do in the spring, right? Yeah. <laughs> my 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 uh, my this spring fill up booked. Yeah, almost. 
Uh, well, almost. See, oh, now wow. we can finish that off. It depends on how long I stay in open hours. Pro so. bono work yeah. in there. Okay. Uh, parts of the interior of the building got painted. Uh, fourth grade classroom, my office, the faculty room, and the lower half of the gym. Uh, the garage was cleaned out and shelves were installed. Um, what do we store inside the garage? Various you know? uh, maintenance tools. Okay. Um, but extra furniture when we have it. Okay. The garage is in pretty good shape, other than that okay. area that needed to be repaired because of squirrels. <laughs> they could be a nuisance. Keep out um, the squirrels, yep. Scraped and painted the exterior doors. Um, the sprinklers were flushed out. Installed a gaga ball pit, and I was finally able to see what that actually is. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Maureen, your kids are, are very into that. Oh yeah. Um, new telephone system installed. How is it? Is that all up and running? It system? is all up and running. The the last piece that I inquired about was hooking the phone system into the PA. Right okay. now it is not. Because that's been a while coming. <clears throat> yeah. Well, they're very they're very fancy. They're very fancy. Can you show us afterwards how fancy they are? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, we installed new fire exit signs, new handicap signs in the parking lot, two new do not enter signs in the driveway, um, new stop sign, cleaned out storage areas, cleaned out HVAC vents and filters, um, fixed a heater, new shelves in the library, fixed fence at the ball field, uh, cleaned the back loading dock based on a fire inspection request. Installed big pull down screen in the gym, which has already been put to use. Um, new crosswalk was painted because the old crosswalk didn't lead to nowhere. It was, it was crosswalk. I like that. Where you crosswalk in Finally, <laughs> somebody connected the sidewalk. <laughs> Credit goes to Mary on that. She was very persistent. Thank you. Making sure. She, well, she kept on walking across the crosswalk and ended up in a bush every I'm day. I was parking on like, top of the thing. crosswalk. <laughs> I feel <laughs> um, and septic pump covers were repaired. That was a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> so in the minutes, we they mentioned the centrally reset clocks. Are we do we are the clocks connected to the phones? So and yeah. So let me kind of add into the one. I had Bob give me a little list, okay. and so I was gonna the one. The, he said that. Um, we, you know, the upgrade and installation of the new phones. Um, and I'm working with them to get the clock system replaced and intercom system connected and upgraded. So, so that's, that's still on that's the, on the okay. Yeah, that's the clock on the thing list. is um, still been a, a year. But I think, on. yeah, I think I don't know how long. I can find out that. from um, Scott Paul, who's the director, our, our IT director, is really he is the person. If he mm -hmm. can get it done, it'll get it done. So okay. I'll find out what the timeline is for the. Uh, well, was the big thing about getting all the clocks reset at the same time? It was easy. The problem was it was hard to reset each one and get them all synced. And this is supposed to solve that. Problem. Yeah, we try to announce every morning what the time in the office is so people can maybe Except have an clocks. idea of right. whether their clock is ahead or behind. And the backup generator, whatever happened with that? Do we know? It's on my list. Oh, good. The town has decided <laughs> to move ahead with the purchasing and used a used emergency generator that will serve the entire school. Finally, yay, yeah, go um, they are purchasing the generator from Mike Morowski, who will most likely be doing the pad and excavation work because they got to put it on the pad. It's got to be all kind of hooked up and such. Um, Mark Busier, you know mm -hmm. um, has been looking into the electrical portion of the project for the town. So there is a significant electrical component, component yeah. um, that's you know, and obviously when they were so first that's talking being about installed it, that's so here. That Do we have an idea where the generator is going to be installed? No. I'll, I would imagine I'll back it's somewhere. Back, I believe it's that back I corner. <laughs> yeah, your office. I believe it's that back corner, um, which is great because then this will, you know, this is obviously an emergency shelter and all that. That's, that's what I've been hoping for for a <clears throat> long, long time. Having instead of our townspeople going somewhere else, like the October 31st snowstorm yeah. that wiped out everybody for a week, everybody could have came here and set up camp and. And you, would have and you would have took good care of us. Mm -hmm. Ray and I would take advantage of instructional time. <laughs> <laughs> we could have classes. The kids could be busy. <laughs> so I, ha I have a question about that. There has been discussion, and I think it 
might just be discussion at this point about a preschool playground um, being out in that direction. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know where exactly. Have you already they did a fundraiser. I, I have. Christy and I talked about it a little bit. Um, clearly, there's a need for it. You know, they, their playgrounds are vastly different than the one that we have out there. Um, I'm not sure where where it got in terms of funding and who has checked into the cost, but. I think it's pretty early on. Yeah. I think it's definitely a good idea, though. There might be some grant. Um, well, it's good to keep in mind yeah. with the generator. That's yeah. what right. I'm thinking. Yes. So okay. the generator will be put in a, you know, will be put in a shed. So even if it's near a playground, I mean, basically, you're going to be looking at a playground that's going to have, um, hey, turn the book on camera. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. He's got proof. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs to return their library books as that <laughs> third or fourth grader just showed us. Uh -huh. <clears throat> um, so it'll be in a shed, so as long as we can do it aesthetically pleasing and not in the middle of where we're mm -hmm. hoping to put that, we'll look at that when we look to install that. Yeah, just keep that in mind. I think that's what you're trying yes. to point out. Yeah. So where, do, where would the funding come for something like that? The like preschool, I think mean, my understanding is they're going to try and fundraise for they it. Which just, is, um, a fundraiser this summer, which was a summer preschool camp for two weeks. Um, I'm sure that's, you know, I, I, I imagine it's going to be expensive to put a playground and be up to code. I think, right. I think there's grant. I think if if whoever we can get to look into grants, I bet you you could probably find some grant money out there. That's early childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think we have a full plan. I think that it's just a need that's been identified and they're starting. To so I think, you know, we can talk about that's something we want to throw on, an agenda. on the agenda for November. I'm saying November Budget. because October is a um, joint meetings. We want to keep that kind of brief, but we can throw that in the November one. And between now and November, we can look into where things are, you know, get some ideas. Right. The thing with the playgrounds, everybody knows you can go very basic or you can go you know, high tech extreme, and mm -hmm. depending on what the needs are, number of views, you know, and then you can start looking at different funding. Mm -hmm. um, I know Waitley would love me when I say the word CPA, but you know, you can possibly get some mm. some portion of that. Um, it's the playground that the community can use on out of school hours or that kind of. Depending on what the pro what it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I think Chrissy had some something in mind. Okay. All right, the so other we'll, one. The other Chrissy. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll put on the November agenda to come back to so we don't take it off our... Sound good? Yep. Right. I think there were some questions about the playground in terms of accessibility. You know, there, there used to be a swing that w was handicapped mm -hmm. accessible, and it's not currently functioning, so it, I think it must be in the garage or somewhere. The current playground? Yeah. Yeah, there used to be. The That's playground. right. Mm -hmm. And I've asked Bob to look into... Um, Replacing the wood chips, so we're pretty low. And those are special. Though, and those are special type of. They're not yeah, they can't be right. um, pressure treated wood. I'm hoping to have ten yards of playground mulch delivered to a school later this week. Mulch or wood chips? Ten yards of playground mulch. So we need to talk to him and make sure he knows it. And it needs to be. He's done it. We just did Deerfield, so he chips. knows what he's. He should know what he's ordering, but we will double check. Okay. That. Right. Yeah, it's some it's special. I was on the committee when we when we built that this out one, there, and it yeah. was it was it was fun. It really was. I mean, I was on a cement mixer mixing up. <clears throat> we mixed up a lot of cement that day for for bases and stuff, and we had a lot of wrenches. But the guy, who, the people who we bought it bought it from, he was there the whole time. Instruction people, and we probably had twenty to thirty people volunteers helping on a particular day, and, mm -hmm. it, and it went up quite well and stuff. So. It was, it was, it was fun. When was that? that the, oh. um, do you remember? Because it was before, I think it was like the year before Maxwell came. So maybe 2000. It's pretty recent, I guess, is what I'm saying. So we might want to look comprehensively at the playgrounds as mm -hmm. we're thinking about updating things. You can ask right, Mrs. 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 Yeah, H. Who will know probably exactly. She planted those two maple trees out there in, in honor of her husband and stuff. So yeah. um, she would know the date. I just think if, just if like we that. only build for the little kids and the big kids. I need to maintain the other one. It might be good to think about right, what yeah. else they need. We have the goggle kit, which is great. Right, but I think you're right on um, and saying that if we're going to update one, we might as well think repair about and kind of yeah, get everything up to speed at one time. If you're going to rally get the money. troops, still rally the there, then next year say, can you guys rally right. again for the other side? It's kind of see if we can knock it down. In one. the case of the handicap um, swing, maybe 
somebody besides Bob, which has a, probably a lot on his plate, if somebody wants to Google it and find out who has them, how much they are ahead of time, and is this one repairable? If not, if it costs $2,000, I bet you we could probably come up with $2,000 somehow, some way for the new <coughs> handicap accessible swing and stuff. But if it's, you know, but if somebody can do a little leg work, I mean, I would imagine that's all we have to do is Google, you know, Google it or something. Yeah, you can look at it. So, I mean, there's, again, swings, I guess you can say, are like cars. You've got the you know, deluxe additions to, to the very basic ones, to the ones that are constructed by, you know, local yeah, car. You know. And I don't even know, yeah, you know, Elon Musk on the other side. Um, and I don't know, I'll be honest, I don't know the laws and regulations on what is required of a playground now than what it was mm. 10 years ago. I mean, because if you, anybody's been up to, like, Leverett Elementary, they mm -hmm. have a community-built playground that now it's getting a little bit, you know, dated, but it's, you know, it's, you know, it's made completely out of wood, but it's, you know, all different levels and castles and slides and all this other stuff, but it was a very interesting kind of thing. I wonder if you can do that. I wonder if they've changed, if they're always changing regulations. Mm -hmm. so we have to look into that too, but mm -hmm. playground and some sort of. I think some of that also depends on where the money comes from. Yep. There may be some stipulations mm -hmm. if, we, if we have a grant. Yep. And access school versus, you know, town playground. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to look into that. Sound good? Yep. All right. Um, the other thing, so I said uh, that we were going to have to do some regular maintenance to the metal roof this fall. Um, what does that rate mean? I do not know, but he's going to be up there doing some regular maintenance, <laughs> and big, obviously, the big roof is the bane of this. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I think, I think we have money. Don't we have money in the yeah. line item to, to... In the budget, Patty added money for maintenance. Because the, the, they have to uh, replace the annual maintenance. Or, or, we, have, we had leaks in the cafeteria over the summer. Those have it's been... Probably, not related to the sprinkler system. Okay. Probably so has something to do with that repair when we took this <laughs> the uh, we'll skylight out and stuff. That's It was around the skylights. This type of roof, I guess, needs routine maintenance every year or every other year or something. Mm -hmm. they, so um, we did build something into the budget for that last year. Okay. That's what All right. I'll get, any, I'll get additional information on that for our next report on that. All right. That's all I have here. That's it. Um, besides new personnel. Can I just ask part. one other question? Did we yeah. do any carpeting or in the classrooms this year? No. Before I, I got here, one room, I think. Just one room was had, this had previous the carpet summer. taken out. Mary would know better than Remember the summer before they were doing a project? They didn't do anything this year. No. I, remember, I remember the last meeting that we were going to, any extra monies were, if I remember right, every extra money was me put towards uh, technology. Mm -hmm. That's, I remember, I mean, that's the only thing I remember because we weren't going to tackle any floors I'd just be curious if year. we're going to continue that or what the thinking is. I don't need it right now, but just mm -hmm. as we think about it. I hope so. Next year. Yeah, they were going to do what they the did some is, last year. They were going to do some this year, but as as there was that money right. left over. Right. But I know the teachers were sort of not, I, I'm, the teachers might not love it. We might want to talk about it with them. Well, when what you lose there. the carpeting, you lose the, the noise buffer. Mm -hmm. um, but it's easier to clean. It is easier to clean and we can guarantee there's no mold underneath. Mm -hmm. Right now, we can't really guarantee that. Right. right. So we just want to think about what where we're going to go with that. Right. I think. Yeah, I noticed, I think second grade has tennis balls on the well, chairs. that'll be the next thing that people are requesting. Tennis yeah. balls yeah. because <laughs> of the noise, yep. and well, they got throw rugs, I think, so that helped. With we this. have a we have a meeting at the high school uh, across from the media center, and they have these little devices that go on the bottom of the chairs. So I would say that yeah, those are pretty cool. The middle and high school, I would say eighty-five percent of the rooms have. Um, Felt bottoms, they have these little click on things. So we yeah. was smart enough to sell the tennis balls, and so then they made a device that clicks on yes. the bottom of the chair so you don't get the. Or they're heavy duty too. So, um, That's good. so yeah. call the, no, I forget what they are, fuzzy feet or whatever they are. But, <laughs> I don't know, they're, you know. You think Bob can take like a price on like, like, Oh, yeah, we, we, sure we buy them, we buy them every year, so at the secondary. So if you have. Set of tennis one, balls. Well, it's like it's like a couple bucks a chair or something like that. It's a would, bucket chair. That would be part of the expense of replacing the floors. Right. I imagine. Yeah. So just in the past, we have been somewhat surprised with capital projects at the very last minute at these meetings. So mm -hmm. what we've been trying to do is stay ahead of the projects and really be thinking out further ahead so we can plan and be thoughtful and also know where the money's coming from to pay for a lot of these things. So that's just why I'm asking a lot of questions because I want to 
keep us in the habit of thinking yeah, ahead. Coming. What yeah. I'll do is I'll ask Bob to create us a capital project list that he has on. He right has now. one. Yeah, I know he has one, but to provide it for yeah, it again. Yeah, and so that's why I added in the in the regular meetings the capital planning update. It's, it's one of our updates on our agenda. Capital projects under the reports. So, so the question is, who gives that report? Yeah. I was just going to say, is it a wish list? Do I get to? Well, I, I'm happy to talk about projects coming forward, but also we want to make sure we're getting things done. Like so, like you'll notice some of these projects took year, year plus to get done, which is fine, but we just don't want to lose sight of things. Like the generator has been going on for years, and that's nobody's fault, but it's more just to make sure we're staying. On. Sure. It's like a heads up. Yeah. What I will do is I will have Bob. Um, come to the November meeting okay. and present the <clears throat> his kind of capital project list over five to ten years, um, okay. and you know we're doing the same thing in capital you know planning. We're doing obviously about how is on the uh, the frontier thing where we're looking at the ten years, having a list, mm -hmm. projecting what we're seeing coming ahead so that we can prepare. Right. We know we have a full making this up full roof to be redone. Five years from now, we can start we planning. Start and, you, you know, you start and we can start letting the town know. Because <coughs> I think right. that's also important. Yep. One of the things that has come up is maintenance of the gym floor. No okay. one seemed to be available to either refinish it or um, to instruct Dan on how to do that. And so it, it seems to be an ongoing issue. And Bob talked again about bringing in a company, which sounds yeah, more than well, the company I know a little bit about polyurethane, so the company that you would bring in would be like Dion. Dion would bring his machines in, strip the whole thing, sand the whole floor, strip it all. Uh, you have to probably get somebody, I'm not sure if they would do it, the new lines for basketball, volleyball, uh, etc., in there, and then put probably three coats of a oil polyurethane down, which is the hardest. It's not the greenest, but it is the hardest, but it's usually something you would do. Uh, Summer, you know, summer vacation right. type of thing. You wouldn't do it during the year because of the fumes. <coughs> You're just talking about like cleaning the floor and well, like there's just day to day. There's you know sort of the, the big time refinishing, but then um, typically over the summer there is a sort of hmm. oh, you know, lower maintenance kind of way to shine that thing up yeah. without having to redo the lines. All right, I'll talk to Bob where that stands because they apparently there's one person who knows how to do it and he doesn't want to do it. Because he's got too much of his own stuff to do. Right. We well, can, we I mean, can, clearly, we, we can clearly that person works at Frontier because <laughs> Frontier does do the gym yes. twice a year. So, yeah. um, just based on you know, obviously use is higher, but maybe we can see advise. what that. Yeah, yeah, our issue was teach, that just teach Dan just doesn't things. know what to do, and okay. I don't want him messing with the sander on the gym floor if he doesn't. Yeah. A lot of times, if if the, if the floor is in good shape, it just needs a little buffer. Right. You 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 would screen it a little bit. Back it really well and then put another coat of polyurethane yes, down on top of it to give it the fresh look and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yep. now a year or two ago, Andy did some something to that gym floor that it was sparkling. It was really, I don't know what he did. Andy knew how to do that, though. yeah, because yeah. I know I've seen him doing it uh, in other places. So, mm -hmm. personnel, okay. um, new staff. Uh, we really only have one person who's brand new. Sarah Chapdelaine is the instructional assistant in first grade, um, while Virginia Coles is covering a maternity leave for Rebecca Chase. And Rebecca is due to return at the end of March. Also, Dan Talbot accepted the position of full-time custodian, moving from the part-time afternoon custodian. Um, so now I need one of those. Is that who we see walking the halls right now? Probably. Dan? Probably. He's done a great job stepping in. So we're advertising for a part-time custodian? It's, it's, it's out there already. Okay. Um, and I'm the other new staff. <laughs> well, and I saw Julie is not here. Anymore. Yeah, I know. I was sorry to see Julie yeah. left. Oh, um, we were I'm trying sorry. to. I forgot uh, Bonnie Learned mm -hmm. took over for Julie in the cafeteria. We try to get her an extra half an hour yeah, or something. Yeah, we were trying to keep her here, but she ended up leaving anyway. Right. Yeah, I texted her when I saw that. Mm. She's working full-time for uh, the bus company. Oh, okay. I thought that's what she said, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, new staff. Thank you very there much. summer programs? Summer programs, yeah. Uh, yep, we had uh, the two weeks of pre-K camp. 
It was pretty amazing. <laughs> like one of the weeks, the theme was mud, <laughs> and uh, little guys get into that. Um, and then we had a very impressive inventors camp here. There were 60 students, and um, it looked pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. They were able to pull stuff apart and recreate recreate things so that was great to see really um, and that was a that had doubled since the year before so that was the second year that popular yeah we couldn't do it this year mm -hmm. the kids were bummed yeah did that get good reviews at your house yeah I don't get a whole lot of information from sixth grade <laughs> <laughs> oh come on oh come on <laughs> too cool for school Right. Any questions on that? No. All right, moving on to the next um, topic is the MASC MASS Joint Conference. Um, we already have a delegate. Are you, you know, I forget the topic. I have a list of who's going. Are you going? I am. You are going. I'll be at that meeting. Okay, good. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure um, you know, when I retire, I can yeah. right. um, So the information's in there. If um, so, I guess you have to, you have to vote, vote a voting delegate. So being a delegate. Yeah. So. You know, she's already. You were a delegate last year. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't even know what it was. You make a motion. <laughs> that's a shock. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was pretty new. Yeah, that's pretty do new people. Yeah. I make a motion to have uh, Maureen be our delegate at MASC conference, joint conference. I second. All in favor? Okay. Rio on that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, the last part here is that we have two policies um, for adoption. So if you have a chance to read them over. You know how many we have to... Are we going to have a policy committee again this year to oversee these in the future? Or there is a, well, we always should have a policy subcommittee that's standing so you can call it to action as soon as you need it. Yeah. Um, Didn't we just there, vote we, Maureen? We on did a, a yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just appointed <laughs> Maureen. Um, <clears throat> you did quite a few the last two years. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's a few other stragglers that had to be cleaned up this year. Um, a lot of them are, as you'll see with these, are. You know, they're coming down their either state laws or you know recommended policies from um, <clears throat> MA, MASC um, so you don't really have a lot of you know uh, fiddling with them but um, I'll talk with uh, Donna and see where we are with the overall how many more we have to go she has a good idea of that all right um, so we are looking at um, the first one is um, the education opportunities for military children. Good morning, Whiteley students and staff. Today is Tuesday, September 11, 2018. I'm going to pause. The time there. in the office okay. is 8:52. Today's lunch is a barbecue rib sandwich, and you have the choice if you'd like to have um, cream and broccoli soup. Best of luck to our fifth graders on their trip to nature's classroom. Have fun and learn amazing new things. Please stand for the pledge. Today we have and they made it to television. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today's kindness quote comes to us from Harold Kushner. When you are kind to others, it not only changes you, it changes the world. Have a fantastic day. <laughs> Adding I, that to I our like, meetings. I like that. You know, the kindness quote. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I started to go off the listing, but let me go off of how it is presented in your packet. That'll be easier to go through. Okay. So let's we'll start with uh, um, <clears throat> EFD meal, cha meal charge policy. Um, and you can kind of go to the second page in red where it shows the 
what we delete, what we eliminated and put in. Um, I don't know how you guys have previously gone through these. Have you gone through them as a whole? I think yeah, just, all as one. That's okay. what we've done. So I guess all the three, you, had, you had a chance to review them. Is there any questions on all, on these? Um, I had a question on the student activity accounts. Sure. Because they are very specific to the um, high school yep. in terms of class years. But I know we do have class accounts here. And I wondered if we should be adapting them to also incorporate our, I mean, our Fifth grade, sixth grade, they all have classes. That was um, a big question that I had. Yeah. Because so I know that that is not a thing that's supposed to happen anymore in terms of like the class accounts. individual class accounts. Right. Everything's so they supposed to be funneled through students. I have activities. a little bit of information. I don't know if it's the right information. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about the fundraisers for the classes. They used to have their own thing. Sixth grade still does, and it goes to the town, so it may follow this. but. Mm -hmm. Fourth and fifth grade, I think, because I talked to the PTO treasurer, I th they their money I think goes to the PTO in the, um, and if it, it goes to the general fund, I think so it's like a PTO fundraiser, which helps to support their class trips. And if they need more money, I think right. the PTO is going to give it. And if they have extra, I think it goes to the PTO general fund, so I don't know. Right, the, this. the PTO has different rules to follow then. Right, the, the right. I guess I just was thinking we should have policies if we have funds and or, or policies that clarify what we are doing with the money. So everyone's clear on that. And maybe this isn't the place, but so for Wheatley. I mean, you get policies and you get procedures. You know, it's within the policies. They're basically what they're telling us is that you can't. What was happening um, at, at Frontier is that you know, class graduates. And there's five hundred dollars sitting in their account. Right. It belongs to the class, and so therefore, we would hold on to that money, waiting for the mm -hmm. class to come back for their five-year reunion right. or ten-year reunion. And sometimes they come back, and sometimes they don't, depending on the organization of the class. Um, so. The last couple of years, we've been reaching out to those class presidents. So we're calling people up and say, "Hey, mm -hmm. you were class president." And they're like, <laughs> "Oh my!" Or I, I was. You're even better. Is like you were secretary. I was. <laughs> and so yeah. And so now you have a role in this money. We have to hand off. And so we put in a um, we put in a procedure that we. Um, so it's not a policy. Sometimes we sometimes we use the word policy, mm -hmm. but it's not according to like the policy handbook. But we had to have two officers sign off. To send out a check, so it doesn't just go to one individual mm, who goes out and puts yeah. it into their, you know, whatever they enjoy doing. So, um, so we've been closing out those those accounts, and so that's basically what they're really saying. So it okay. sounds like if you have, if you do fundraising, and then it's going back to, in the end, they are writing a check, technically transferring accounts, back to the PTO. That's going to fall within this policy, mm -hmm. um, and it's showing accountability to that money. So I guess we could write up a. You can write a procedure for you know, um, you know, with, with weekly accounts and what happens to you know what happens yeah, to the accounts. I just want to make sure you guys know there are accounts that the teachers um, use, and mm -hmm. I think some transparency and well, that, I, rules my, about how those are used would be helpful. Okay. And what kind of oversight? And what kind of oversight they have? Because I think so. <clears throat> all right, so that we should isn't look really at, clear to everybody. Right, right so now. we should look at. Put it on your kind of list of things to do. Um, we should look at the activities accounts. They're current, currently what they look like, and I can go through with you. Um, basically, activity accounts follows in the purview. The, it starts with the purview of the principal. Right. You're supposed to you kind of it's you oversee them. Um, you know, at the secondary level, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars when you make personal right, just, right. You just that, as the This account. isn't that much money. It's not that money, but you want to make sure because. Well, also, you, what happens when the sixth grade has extra <coughs> money? Like, I think, you know, you're giving it back to the class. This is then, I think, rolling going, over to the next back. class. And right. so that's fine. You know, we just need to be clear on how we're using the money. Or what's being Especially used. if it's sixth grade class, if there's extra money, they have a little start for the following year if, when they go on their class trip to uh, New York. Yeah, New York. So, yeah. So, all right. Okay. Sounds like a plan to me. That was my only question on the activity okay. stuff. Otherwise, I didn't have any other questions. Um, the, the foster care um, policy is one that we were, you know, pretty much following. But basically, um, if you have any questions on it, and the military one is, we don't have a lot of military children, but basically, students who were 
<clears throat> being moved throughout the country due to being um, with a family in the military, were getting punished by not having enough credits moving forward. And so what they're telling the schools is to work work more with, it's not a child's fault. If, you know, if a student came into, let's use Frontier with graduation and credits, um, came in, they would say, oh, you don't have enough credits to graduate on time with your class. Mm -hmm. And it's not the student's fault that's transferring with the right. military family. So they're saying, <coughs> you know, they're, they're giving some rules to apply credit and a placement in classes and that kind of stuff. Uh, benefit of the doubt kind of thing. So that those, those kiddos, that those students are not, um, and then DCF policy basically is, um, if a student's put into foster care, we try to keep them in the same school. So we don't want to have them, um, for the most part, depending on where the foster placement is, but if they're a town away, we will bust that child so they can have continued services in their, in their, in their home school so that their, um, well, if their life is upside down, at least they have the consistency. Yeah. And so that basically just talks about how those models work. So any other questions on this? Um, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the policies. This is written. All in favor? All right. So it's 3-0 in all policies. All right. Um, so the reports, I was, uh, the capital projects was one, but you guys kind of jumped the gun on that, so I don't think there's anything more to say on that. But it would be nice every meeting to just get the touch base on where things are. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in November. Yeah, and I think if, I think it's, to get me also on board with complete understanding of all the capital projects, mm -hmm. have Bob give a kind of presentation, uh, kind of give us a starting thing, and then when we review the capital projects, we know, um, both Chris and I both know exactly where that is. Okay. Um, Maybe I, the only report I have is to welcome Darius to yeah. Waitley and to Roland, you're doing a great job so mm -hmm. far, and Chrissy, we're really delighted to have you and look forward to working with you this year. And I want to thank the search committee publicly again for all their hard work. And the end of the year was busy around here. They were um, very diligent. And, and Louise process. and um, Sarah. Kristen and Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. Well, thanks, Sarah. But she wasn't really <laughs> involved in the search. <laughs> she does a lot. <laughs> she didn't deserve it. She she re she'll lot, she'll refuse the thank you if she yeah. didn't deserve it. Don't worry. <clears throat> and I also wanted to publicly acknowledge Patty and all her good work because she's no longer. She has moved on, but we appreciate everything she did. So I just wanted to thank her for all she's done. Um, and that's it. So. I just have one thing today. Uh, 17 years ago today, we um, things in our, in our United States was turned upside down with 9-11 and most of, you know, all these kids in this school, unless our teachers are teaching them what happened on this day 17 years ago, um, it was, we were all turned upside down. I remember being off on a, it was a Tuesday, and I was golfing by myself, and I played nine holes, and I came up and got a drink at the stand, and they were talking about some plane that ran into one of the buildings in New York. I said, oh, no big deal, I played another nine, Came back around, I heard there was a second plane in the second building. I said, it's time for me to get home and find out what's going on. And mm -hmm. I think all of us were turned upside down that day. And, uh, um, you know, we'll never forget it uh, as long as we live. And hopefully we could teach the kids in, in our school what happened in, in, a, in, a, in a good way to show them, you know, just educate them and right. stuff. So it was, it was... It was it was it was it was a rough it was rough that that and I, I just remember it was just a rough day. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Collaborative hasn't met. No, it's so. meeting September twenty sixth. I think the day okay. the night before our open house. Yeah. Okay. And you've gone through most of it. Do you have any other updates besides what um, you share? Or? A few things. Um, okay. The opening of the school year was pretty awesome. Um, we had our New Year's Eve party. Um, it was about 110 degrees out there. <laughs> and uh, we had a really good showing of, of families at that. Um, Got a nice article in the paper, too. Yeah, there have been several articles. Oh, my anyway. sister calls me all the time to say, you're in the paper again. <laughs> um, so we had you know, 89 students and their families were here, which Okay. It surprised me when I looked at that number because they weren't all here at the same time. Um, but it was it was uncomfortably hot that day, and I wouldn't have been surprised if people 
didn't really want to come for that. But people showed up. They maybe didn't stay as long as they would have if it wasn't so unbearably hot. But um, and a big shout out to the sixth grade students who really <laughs> pulled it all off. Um, took care of all the the ice cream part of it so that I could wander around and meet folks. So that's great. That's a great day. idea. Um, and then the next day we had a collection of folks here to to welcome the kids, and that I think was a another exciting way fun. to start the school year. Um, musical instruments, and you're going to have to join us next year. <laughs> Assign you an instrument over the summer so you can practice. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we had local law enforcement, and some a representative from the fire department. We had that the was school really committee nice. was there. Next year, Bob will be retired, so he's going to have to come as well. <laughs> um, but it was a, it, it was a a great thing and, and both of these things were put in place sort of um, as a, a new start to things but I, I think they're things I'd like to do every year that was fun um, safety drills we had uh, both bus evacuation and fire drill on September 5th and um, there was nothing remarkable we could handle it Great. Um, I was amazed at how quickly and silently they got out of the building and they were lined up. And we walked out and I said to Chief Hannum, why are they being so quiet? <laughs> they were just silent in that field, all lined up, so that was great to see. Um, we have several more drills coming up from various times. Um, the next piece, um, Louise Law and I are, are uh, working on um, trying to change one of the positions in the school. Um, Wendy Will, her position is 0.93, which was an agreement that was reached a long time ago when she had a small child and the timing wasn't working out. So she has a 0.93 position um, and we'd like to make that a full-time position. Uh, so we're working on that right now. Um, and my goal for her is to have her spend that first chunk of time in the morning working with instructional assistants to increase their ability to work with small groups. That's a great idea. Um, so that does have a good question because each school committee handles kind of personnel changes differently. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> unless we're looking for money, obviously we're yeah, looking, looking for, looking money, for money. money, it has to come before here, but we're looking to fund this through, at least this year, through, mm -hmm. through uh, the Reach Grant, Reach Grant, Reap or Reach? Reap, Reap. Reap Grant. Reap. Um, Reap. Regional, the Reap Grant is the regional, something grant. So, um, Louise manages all that. And so, oh, we'll be able to, Louise yeah, so it's a grant that we get every year um, that pays for, from different from professional development to, you know, different mm -hmm. kind of positionings and that kind of is stuff. Is it a district so. grant or is it a Louise grant? Every school, every gets, school, it. Every gets, school gets it. Every school gets it. It comes into Frontier and gets split yeah. up from there. Um, but it's money that we have. So it wouldn't be additional money um, this year. But this next year, but next year we have to do your talk. You're right. And so it's okay. about a five to six thousand um, dollar adjustment. Okay. Um, so. So yeah. So okay. I don't Helpful. know. You know. You know. This is obviously. You know. They're working on putting it together. I see presented today. You know. Um, we can. Well, we, we're mostly focused on the budget side of things, yeah. but obviously personnel are the biggest piece of the budget, so yeah. it's helpful to know yeah. what you're thinking. Um, it sounds like it'll come into play in the budget. Season. Yeah, for, for next year. Yeah, so as I see is we'll put it in place, this if, if you guys can hammer out all the details mm -hmm. there, we'll put it into place this year and then it'll be part of the budget proposed to the school committee right. next year and then we can decide, you know, and figure out as we adjust the numbers of all the different components of the budget. Right, I mean, I guess I would encourage us to think about if we have money somewhere that we could repurpose for this, if we decide this is what we want to be doing, okay. rather than try and... You just start, right, putting, we're we're putting all often right. asking for money yeah. for, from the town and this seems like something maybe we could absorb, I don't know. But it's always good to look at that. Mm -hmm. See what's possible. Um, couple other new things going on. I, we will have an instructional leadership team here, and we're gonna, that's gonna kick off on Thursday, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So what does that mean? Um, what do they do? So typically in a larger school, you ask for interest, and then you, you vote on who you'd like to represent on the instructional leadership team. Um, based on the time requirements, I only had six folks who were able to do that, so that's the team. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we'll start by looking at data, MCAS data, and uh, data from beginning of the year assessments, and figure out what direction the school needs to go in in terms of professional development and support, and, and try and align everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, two heads are better than one. Yeah. Um, it just shouldn't be coming just oh, one from my office, especially mm -hmm. since um, the folks on the ILT are experts at Waitley Elementary School, and I'm I'm mm -hmm. the new girl, so um, right. I'm, I'm excited that about like that. Great Does idea. Louise help with that too? Or she, not know? she would if I asked her to. Mm -hmm. um, it's a structure I bring with me from where I was, mm -hmm. and so I've got you know some idea of how I want it how I want it to go and great. what I'd like it to achieve. I like that. Um, and then we also have a new staff meeting structure. So we'll meet once a month for 30 minutes and it'll be more of a nuts and bolts kind of meeting. And then uh, once a month after school um, and they will be staff-led professional development opportunities. So I propose that to the staff and it's starting to grow on people. But there's, there's so many great things that go on in classrooms and teachers don't often have a chance to, to share. To share and uh, go see each other, so I, I wanted to sort of build that in and get that get that talk going. Great. And that's about it. And just um, a big thank you for having me here. It's, it's, <laughs> You're still happy? I am. Okay. It's, it's amazing. Of course, she is. We're only a few weeks. <laughs> We're, hap we're happy to have you yeah. and, and your knowledge that you're bringing from. It's great to bring some new practices. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's been so supportive. Yep, it's a great school. It's always been a great mm -hmm. school. It's it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Excited. So, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Superintendent. Yeah, Superintendent report. Um, some of the stuff we've already went through, but you know, obviously we had a smooth opening of all um, all five schools in the district, and um, and it, they said the introduction of all the administrators across the district. And obviously, Miss um, Curry's on the top of the list, um, <clears throat> and so you can read through that. Um, I am creating an entry plan um, as recommended um, by my. Um, I'm in a superintendent induction program, even though I'm only an in interim, is to have some sort of plan moving forward. So I'm, gonna put, I'm putting one together with my coach and such, um, but I'm also being respectful that it is an interim position and I'm not you know, um, assuming or that kind of thing, but I'm, I'm trying to, um, you know, working off of last year's strategic plan rather than recreating one. Mm -hmm. um, and the administrative team and I met to go through that, um, and we all agreed that that's probably the best way to go at this point, given the late the late start and the newcomers on the administrative team. So we're kind of carrying through on that. I'm going to the conference that we already discussed. Can I ask a question? Yep. Your coach? You said you had a coach? Yep. Kevin Courtney is my coach. Is he a coach? So, yep. Where is he? Kevin Courtney was a longtime superintendent at Pioneer. Um, and now he is working with the, he's working a lot with the um, MASS, Massachusetts Association of Superintendents, School Superintendents. So he's been doing that for the last for six years. I don't mm -hmm. want to age him wrong, but that, that's what he is. But he's a, uh, yeah, so he's my right. coach. We meet several times a month. And then I'm also doing the professional development um, as part of that program. They meet eight times during the year. And, you know, okay. it's, it's, it's almost like a, it's like, it's almost like a little college We're course. Therapy. You have homework, <laughs> you got readings to do, you got to, you know, produce things. So it's, it's a good, it's a good thing to do. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they had asked me going into it, even though you're in term, you don't have to necessarily sign up for this, but um, you know, I said, might, yeah, as well. might as well. Yeah. And, and, um, and just as a piece of information, there are 44 people in the group. Wow. There are 44 new superintendents in Massachusetts this year. So that's pretty good. It's uh, like a third of the school yeah. districts. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's the largest group they've had, so it's an interesting trend. Yeah, when I got the, um, I got a, like a summer update from the collaborative and they just in our Hampshire Franklin district there was it, it mentioned that yeah. the number it was like 20 percent or something I didn't I didn't see the report but it is there is a lot of my I happen to know because I know I see them at the meetings and mm -hmm. such and that kind of thing so um oh I have a software uh 
software update. Oh, yeah, that's the person. Um, we are, as you know, we've gone to the Infinite Vision software um, to look at managing our budgets um, outside of just the business office alone. Um, and the uh, principals and central office staff are being trained in ongoing training. We actually mm -hmm. had training last week to continue training, and there'll probably be another one as the principals get used to looking at the budgets. And remember, the big, the big change there is that principals now will have in front of them in their schools an accurate look at what their that's budget's right. at in the spending and, and um, you know, what's about to be spent, what is spent, you know, that kind of thing. Um, while there's still, it's not always 100% accurate as you have a lot of things, you know, moving things, but it's a lot better than what it was before where you're mm -hmm. waiting for monthly, um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Um, the monthly reports and then kind of going off that or having to call the business office every time and saying, was this the accurate number in this account? So it's getting us a lot better to be up to date on, on spending. Right. That'll definitely help us in the second half of the year. There's a lot of glitches in the program as we get multiple users in it. Um, and obviously also a changeover um, with TMS taking over, Brian taking over, mm -hmm. um, that, um, that we're also working on. So it's just letting you know that's going on. Um, I have an IT update. I just thought, I asked Scott Paul to give me an IT update of what's going on in all the schools. And um, I just thought, you, know, you can kind of look through it. I just thought it was interesting um, to see what other schools are doing and what, I mean, we don't talk about IT unless the internet's down. Um, but they do quite a bit of um, things over the summer, and it just kind of gives you an idea of all the things. And also, I thought, one school looking at what other schools are doing, we could say, hey, are we doing that here? And, um, you know, or we've already done that here. It just kind of keeps in us an eye on our own school as well here at Waitley. Um, and then the, the last um, issue, um, I think people knew that was going on, but we do have a file storage um, issue now that we are in the final stages of selling the old central office at Christian Lane. Um, there are a lot of files there. And so this was one of those, um, Patty was working on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think she was the one taking the lead on that. And so with her departure, it kind of, I went over there and took a look around and I was um, amazed about how much files there are there. Mm -hmm. And it is a really a massive job ahead. So. Um, we do have a, a quote from a, a company that did help us kind of get it organized to see what see clearly what the problem is. Um, I have a meeting with them later this week um, to look at to kind of kind of give me the color version of the report about what it covers and what it does cover and what the costs are going to be us further down the road. Mm -hmm. While this is kind of something that comes out of the frontiers over frontier school committees um, purview as they oversee central office and this it does have the Waitley files there as its own separate district. So we have all four towns files there for school. Mm -hmm. Going back, I mean, we got class class rosters from, you know, almost close to 100 years ago. I mean, everything is kind of, some of it is neat, and some of it is like, I can't believe we have to hold on to this. So, but there are some things that we have to hold on for um, life. There are certain things that hold on seven year spans, and, you, and we rotated that out. Um, you know, yesterday um, we did a clean out and shredded three tons of material and according to Rhonda we're now up to 13 tons of shredded material mm -hmm. so that what had happened over the years because we had storage it was easier just to put it on the shelf and move on um, and so it's a big undertaking because some things can be digitized some things can't you have to have a rotating system and you have to have an inventory system in order to be able to find it and so when we lose that building in a year these got to go someplace and I don't know where they're going to go because mm -hmm. it's going to take a classroom size room in order to do that. So that's the thing that we're going to be working through and I, I say it to all the committees because you never know who knows somebody about mm -hmm. ideas of how to do that. Um, obviously we want to digitize to reduce the number of pieces of paper out there. There are some things that are recommended to not be digitized. There's some things that don't allow you to digitize that has to be photo, uh, microfiche because mm -hmm. you can alter a digital photo. It just goes on and on and some of the stuff that we're keeping is it's interesting that we have to keep it, like, you know, payroll from 50 years ago. If we ever go back, you want to know what, you know, that kind of, so it's keeping all that. But I just want you to know that's a big, okay. it's a big job that's happening in central office at this time. And um, luckily, <clears throat> luckily it's not in the downstairs anymore. Everything is brought, most everything's been brought upstairs to uh, their old kitchen area and some of the offices or old classrooms that are there. Mm -hmm. And like Darius says, it's pretty massive. The only the only spot we could put our stuff, correct me if I'm wrong, is in the basement of our school here, which is a, a pretty good size area. But there again, 
I'm not sure what the storage is like. There's no room. What's down, you know, if there, there again, if we have a storage problem down cellar with old chairs, old tables, it's almost time for a tag sale or bring the dumpster in and, and get, clean our, our, our basement out. You know, that's like, there's so much stuff there for chairs and, and you know, we talked about it back when Lynn was uh, superintendent about just having a tag sale out there and, and then take the money and put it towards whatever we can put the money towards. But there again, there's a lot of furniture there. In the basement here? Well, there, there a, but I'm downstairs. had a big clean out a couple of years ago. Yeah, it's not in bad shape, but there, yeah. there's very limited space. It's not that it's usable. Right, the last a lot of I've only been down here twice, but I, you know, I remember old chairs, old ch old tables, old chairs that were stored up downstairs. So, so that you know, and that was you know, some people, some I can't remember who even said it to me, but lines was, well, you can send all the files of all the towns back to their towns, their files. Mm -hmm. Problem is, is that our central office is the one who accesses those towns. If there's ever going to be a records request, it's going to go to our central office to find it. So while we could break up the four files and send yeah. it back to the four towns, and and then Frontier is kept, you know, in a you know third party location. Um, you know that could be done, but then you're causing now you're moving your files away from each other. It's, I'd love to see a space where they can all be in one place that we know, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, because you start moving forward in places, you got to make sure they're secure, you got to make sure they're safe. Um, you know, environmentally, you can't just stick them in a moldy basement. You know, we did that. Um, you know, those kind of things. You gotta, you gotta kind of do all those kind of things. So, anyways, I'm kind of in the beginning stage of. Evaluate. I think they they were Patty was ahead. In the sense, but now that I've taken over, I'm like three steps back, and I have to make sure that I like exactly where you know um, she she was steering it because I'll be the one owning it moving forward. So, when I think digitizing <clears throat> as much as we can yeah. would be great because it, not only is it um, get rid of the paper, but it makes the access much yep. easier and more people can access yep. more easily. So, yeah. so I um, think the other other problem we have, you know, doing what we have, the problem is if we're not digitizing now. 100% or 50% or whatever, we still have to do that eventually. So if there's a way to start doing it now as of, you know, so, whatever the date. Right, I so mean, there is the last, um, since we've gone to Infinite Visions and I believe the program prior to that, we have all that data. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to go, you, you have to see that they're beautifully bound books of budgets and pay, and if you look at it, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I, I was just laughing, I kind of opened Opened up one the other day. I'm like, I'm like, what is? I mean, what do we need this Everything for? And there, right the there. name I see right there was Don Gordon, who, oh my god, <laughs> you know, who's now the football coach yeah. at Frontier, but a longtime teacher, now <laughs> retired. I'm like, oh, I guess these, these names are still still here. Um, but it was just, there. It's interesting. There, some of them are pieces of art in, in one way, but also, are you ever going to go into them? I don't know. But that's the law is the law on those records, mm -hmm. and what all that. So, all right. So that's what I have there. Okay. And. That's it. That's it. That's a, a the looks good. Okay. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you.